I'm just watching the ants running up and down the stem of my apple tree. And that's a good starter for today's video because it's about a topic that is possibly the most asked question that I get at this time of year, every year. And it's how do I get rid of aphids or whitefly? So let's talk about this then. Why are people worried about things like aphids, whitefly, ants, that kind of thing? And should you be worried? Well, I think worried is quite a strong way of putting it. Yes, you should be aware that they're in your garden and what they do and don't do, but maybe don't lose sleep over it. Okay, given we're talking about this as gardeners and not as any kind of insect researchers, let's keep it simple and we'll say this. I'm just going to use the term aphids. But know that there's all different types of aphids you'll see. They don't all necessarily look the same. You get lots of colours. You'll see green and black, yellow, even pink. And even whitefly. The term whitefly is a bit misleading because yes, they have wings and they fly, but they're technically not a fly. And I'm going to include the whitefly when I talk about aphids because they're so similar that it's just a catch-all term. It's not scientifically correct. But hey. Now you will see aphids or that type of pest all over your garden and lots of different types of plants. And as time goes and you're gardening for longer, you'll start to learn that various plants will attract these pests more than others, and even that you'll get particular types of aphids on particular plants. For instance, in my greenhouse, I know that I can expect to have whitefly appear on my aubergines. They just seem to really like the aubergines and that's the biggest pest I get. On my peppers, I'm more likely to see green aphids on there. That seems to be what is attracted to my peppers and my greenhouse. Out in the garden though, I get aphids out there on different plants and different types of aphids. And that's going to give us a good thing to focus on. So we're going to start here my dahlias. So I know I will get black aphids on my dahlias. Now, let's think about this then. I said you shouldn't be worried about aphids and I stand by that. Yes, you should be aware of them and you should be watching out for them, but don't lose sleep over it. And here's why. Aphids, just a few of them around, will not devastate your garden the way you may think they will if you read things on social media. Yes, that can become an infestation and it can be a problem then. But what happens is aphids are little tiny insects that suck the sap from your plants. OK, so if you don't have a plant that is covered in them, it may not necessarily be a big drama. And let's be honest, they're providing food for the ecosystem of your garden. Things like your ladybirds, your lacewing and even some of your birds will eat them. However, if you then get a lot of them on a plant, that can really weaken and damage the plant because they're sucking all that sap out. Basically, they're sucking a lot of the energy and strength away from your plant, but they can also transfer disease. So these are the reasons why people are wary and watch out for aphids. But, and I'm gonna say this now, and some of you may switch off when I say this, you can't get rid of aphids or stop aphids. OK, it's just your garden is part of nature. It's in the open world. There are going to be all sorts of things living in your garden and you shouldn't be trying to get rid of them because, as I said, it's part of the ecosystem. But what we can do is we can try and manage the numbers and manage any potential damage that's done. And there's two things to think about. And this one might be a surprise. So I've already spoken about my apple trees and the fact that I can see ants running up and down the stem. That is because ants actually farm aphids. Mm -hmm. You heard me right. Aphids produce a sticky secretion that we call honeydew and the ants eat it because it's sweet. So ants will actually get aphids from places in your garden and bring them to a particular plant where they'll have them there en masse and the ants will protect them from any kind of predators in the garden because they want them to produce lots of that honeydew so that they can eat it. So when you see lots of ants 
you're probably going to see aphids. And I can see that I've got aphids on this fruit tree because I can see ants. Okay, so firstly, yes, you can buy pesticide sprays that work really well. I don't use them though. I've got my own ways of doing it without relying on buying those types of things. And the first way I deal with things, and it's very efficient, is as soon as I see any aphids appearing, I just squish them, thumb and forefinger. And you guys see me do this often in videos where I'll get distracted and I'll squish a bug. Okay, that's a really great way of dealing with them because you see those first few little aphids, you deal with them before they multiply because they can multiply very quickly. Sometimes though, you'll find that you'll get quite a few of them appear, especially inside new buds where there's new leaves coming or your flower buds. So make sure you keep an eye in there and regularly go in and squish anything you find. It's just about keeping on top of things. That's usually how I deal with things in the greenhouse because I've got everything at a height where I can see it and I usually catch things before they get too bad. Now, there's a lot more on my dahlia because I only noticed it this week, but that's okay. The next method takes care of when there's a lot more on a plant, especially when you get a real cluster of them in that nice new soft new growth. On my dahlias, it's usually on the flower stem. And simply switch your hose to jet or get a spray bottle on jet and just blast them off. It is really quick and simple. And if you're worried about your plants, you can always hold the stem to make sure it doesn't get flopped about too much and damage it. But what that blasting does is obviously it knocks the aphids and the ants and any other problems off of the plant. And in doing that, a lot of them will actually get killed as you blast them or when they hit the ground. So you're reducing the amount of aphids that are there. Now, it's not a one-time solution. You will have to do this a few times and you will have to keep an eye on things. But over the space of a week or so, I found this is super effective. It will move on those ants and kill off the aphids that are there, saving your little plant. Now, you will have heard of something called a soap spray. It's all over the internet, it's all over social media. That's another way you can deal with things. Now, I won't go into it in detail because I've actually got a really detailed video all about it and I'll link it at the end. But a soap spray is a water solution you make up in a spray bottle using a tiny little bit of soap and you can spray that onto the aphids. Now that's key here. You don't need to spray it all over the garden and in fact you don't want to do that. You want to spray it directly onto where you've got a bunch of these aphids that are a problem. Okay and what it does is aphids are little soft-bodied insects so when you spray them with that soap solution the oils in the soap actually coat them and it causes all sorts of problems with them that just messes up their life cycle. So it stops them from eating, from drinking, um, it can make them suffocate because it stops them from being able to breathe. Okay, now here's the thing, I generally don't use that unless things are really bad because as much as you could say that a soap solution might be an organic way to deal with things, I wouldn't naturally find soap solution in my garden. So I try to use it sparingly. Now you can also get something called a neem oil spray. And again, it's a similar idea. Instead of focusing purely on the soap, this is a pungent um, oil that you can have in there um, that not only deals with these little soft-bodied insects, but it actually affects any of the insects that chew on your plant as well. And it smells utterly disgusting. So it can also put insects off from eating your plants. Again, I've got a really detailed video on neem spray, so I won't go into it here. I will link the videos for the soap solution and the neem solution in the description of this video and at the end of the video if you want more, because there's a lot more to it. But there is one last solution I'm going to give you, but this one is much more of a long-term solution. And it's long term because it's to plant up your garden to attract those beneficial insects that actually eat things like aphids and let them control the population in your garden. 
Now, it is long term because obviously you have to plant for it, plan for it, and it will come into effect in the next season. The reason I'm talking about this as long term is because I don't think it's a good idea to buy those beneficial insects online. So for instance, you can buy ladybirds through the post. <sighs> yes, short term, it might be a solution for you, but think about it like this. Number one, you're getting animals through the post. It's not ideal. They're going to arrive. They're going to be dehydrated. Some of them will possibly be dead or hurt just through the handling of getting them through the mail. But also, if your garden doesn't already support those insects, the chances of them staying once they've had their fill are minimal. So you're still going to have to think about planting for that in future seasons. So I would say just think long term and get all those beneficial little insects into your garden naturally. And that way you're making sure you're getting your local insects. You're not bringing anything into your garden that shouldn't be there. So as always, you do you. This is how I deal with things in my garden. You'll have your way of dealing with things in your garden. Or if you've never done this before, here are some different things to try now that you understand a little bit about it. And as promised, this is the two videos I've done on soap spray and neem oil spray. There's a lot to them, so have a good watch and learn. But until next time, see you folks!